Yeah. G'day everyone and welcome to another episode of Aussie Take It. It's episode 625 and it's on the 21st of March 2019. How good is it to have the footy back, eh? The NRL, the Sharks didn't do too good last week, but anyway, we're up against the, the Titans this week, so we might do something better there. Titans are my second team, you know, but I've got to go for the Sharks first. All right, I'm your host, Glenn Goodman, and we'll be joined in a minute by Joe, the Gadget Man. Uh, but first of all, we better tell you that we are brought to you by ATHWebHosting.com.au. All the uh, servers are on SSD drives, immediate activation, uh, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, and one click, pretty much, install of uh, WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. Why would you worry about Joomla and Drupal? W- w- WordPress is the, the king of the CMSs these days, isn't it? It's uh, easy. It's just um, it's just nice. The servers are pretty much geared towards, uh, you know, WordPress-friendly hosting. So, uh, yeah, so jump on there if you need a WordPress website. Also, we do an uh, email hosting. You might not need a website. You might just want email hosting. You don't want to pay Microsoft $7 a month uh, for each account, so you can come and get some email hosting with us as well. So uh, talk to us. We'll fix you up. And also, startnewcompany.com.au. They'll fix you up, all right, with a new company registered directly and quickly, and I was going to say instantly, pretty much, with ASIC. Uh, Once you complete the the registration form, uh, you pay your money, and within 10 minutes, all your documents uh, and uh, company registration are delivered into your account, uh, yeah, from ASIC, so how good's that? Uh, you can download the documents any time later on, and if you're an accountant or other professional, you are able to also uh, brand the documents with your name or your firm on them, so how, how good's that? It's uh, coming at you from all angles. All right, so also don't forget the... Uh, Aussie Tech Radio, which streams Tech Aussie Tech podcast back to back twenty four seven news shows each Friday. Okay, so they go into a bit of a, like a round robin thing, and they just go round and round and round, and then each Friday new show. So you can join it at any time, and you just join into whatever's playing at the time. And uh, most of the most of the time, it's, it's something interesting, something you haven't heard before. Uh, you get shows like the uh, Aussie Max Zone, the Tech Webcast, uh, and plenty more on there. All right. Uh, we haven't got Jordan this week. We did promise you last week the ring in, but uh, look, we'll wait till Jordan's with us because we need all hands on deck for that, the trial at least anyway. So that'll be coming soon. Uh, what else have we got to tell you about? We've got the YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, and say hello to us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. Uh, the show notes, as always, and the podcast uh, website is aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast all right that just takes up about the whole show there joe welcome joe how are you going good mate how are you yeah not too bad thanks fight and fit which is good it's uh, been a few little storms of late in the afternoon but uh filled the pool up but yeah it's good life's good up here joe hope it's good down there oh yeah we've had a bit of rain this week as well down in sydney um but apart from that all right yeah yeah that's good i hear you there's a cyclone trevor is up in darwin trying to form or something so we'll see what comes of him but uh yeah it's cyclone season isn't it so it's stuff going on um all right so what what anything new with you joe anything of been of of newness this week or you've been still doing your well, joe I the just, gadget I, man i i just released a, a new um youtube video just today um and that's on the, how to unlock your radio when you got the you know you take the battery out of the the car and the car gets the mm. lock code coming up on the screen Yes. Yeah. So basically, with that, you can you can you can unlock it. Um, it's going to cost you a bit of money, but you can unlock it. And I've just produced a little video that shows you how to do that. So if you go to my um, my YouTube, which is JoeTheGadgetsMan dot com forward slash YouTube, uh, you'll find there that there's a uh, a little three and a half minute uh, video on how to do it. So when you say unlock the thing, don't you just put the code in from the the manufacturer? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you put the code in, but you've got to have the code. And so a lot of the times, people don't have the code, and that's what I'm saying. Right. Uh, you, you you get the serial number of the 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 unit, and then from there, you then actually go to a, a website, which um, I use, was online uh, radiocodes.co.uk. Um, you give them the serial number and the type of car and all that sort of thing, information that they're asking. Mm. And um, you pay via PayPal, which I did. And um, within a couple of hours, um, it doesn't happen straight away. Within a couple of hours, you'll get um, 
the email coming back. I mean, it depends uh, how busy they are. Hmm. Uh, you, get, you get a, an email come back with the code. You just put the code in your radio, and away you go. There you go. And um, how much is that, Joe? Does, does that cost you? Uh, it, it, it it varies. It's from from about ten dollars to thirty or thirty five dollars, depending on what model hmm. radio you have. Oh, and cheaper, what car is from cheaper than buying a new radio. That's for sure. So um, well, it definitely is. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of times you go to the uh, mechanic and they pull the battery out, unknowing that the car's got a code on it, and hmm. Then you come back and you say, oh, but my radio doesn't work. Mm. Well, have you got the code? Oh, shit, where was my code? And then you <laughs> can't find it. So, you know, you just go place like that and you get it. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's happened to me a few times. And I think my code, I think it's in the manual. But you might not, you know, not, people don't normally have the manual. So um, I'm, I think it's in the manual. I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, usually, usually you'll find them in the manual. Um, depending on different cars, different cars, Usually it's the, it's the last four numbers of the serial number, and oh, okay. there's all sorts of different ways of working out how to get the code. I mean, don't don't bother with going online and getting these code generators. They're all spam and bogus and, and stuff like that. So don't don't go don't go down that road. Mm. Um, yeah, you, well, know, you you can you can call the the company. You know, like if you it's a Ford or if it's a Hyundai or whatever, you can call them and they. They can give you the code, but they normally cost a little bit more than, you, than you know, what you would get it online. It's like two or three times more. Because anything to do with your car is like so expensive. Like I went over to Nissan, like with me little Cube, because uh, a little Nissan Cube, and I think they said it's if you need anything done to it, it's just like a little Nissan Micra engine wise. Anyway, so I went over to Nissan and I said because I need another little you know uh, keyless entry key buttony thing. I just said, how much are these? And he goes, they're like three hundred and fifty dollars, and I went, <laughs> stick that. I said, I'll just keep the one, and then if that breaks, I'll just use the key. I'm not paying three hundred and fifty dollars for one. My God, but um, but luckily, my, it's you know the one I've got still going. But I oh, know they can get expensive these things. It's just yeah, that's crazy. right. I mean, with, with those keyless entries, also you can go. To, a lot of the places, you know, in the shopping centres, you've got these people that you know cut keys and stuff. Mm. Some, some of them also got wireless remotes for the car and rather than paying how much did you say you were going to pay well they were 350 bucks from nissan yeah this these places in these shopping centers that have these keys that cut then they can charge you up to about 150 to 200 dollars so it is cheaper yeah yeah even at, even that like geez i maybe maybe i could fork out 70 <laughs> <laughs> a stretch, <laughs> but uh, yeah, three hundred and fifty. My God, I, I guess nearly buy an iPad or something. That's a that's, well, that's a, true. Google the inconvenience of having to always use your key all the time. Mm, that's that's six Google Minis, Joe. I can have one in each room, including the toilet. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> yes, but all right. So, um, look, let's see what's been going on this week. This is the stuff. This first story is what caught my eye. It's pretty much this one, just a bit of a recap. I think it was last week we were talking about the Belong and Telstra and Belong Energy. Uh, they were having a bit of a, a fight, having it out in court. Uh, Telstra didn't like that Belong Energy called themselves Belong Energy because Telstra thought Belong belonged to them. So Melbourne-based solar power provider Belong Energy was ordered to cancel its registered business name of Belong Energy and any other business names containing Belong. So they've you been. Know, I, I've seen that. I've seen that Belong Energy, and I thought, geez, what's uh, Belong doing with energy? Like, what are they doing? I didn't know they were doing that. And that's probably why they got told to nick off because there's too much confusion in the marketplace. But look, I've. Uh, Oh, did I? Oh, where's that? I did have a uh, the web page because when you see the web page, it's not really, you know, that it doesn't really look like the Telstra one because the Telstra one's pretty poor, to be honest. The Belong Telstra one, but this one, like, you know, they, it's a fair ink in place. Like they put a lot of uh, effort into the web page and everything. So, uh, you know, we've got, you know, you've got all this down here. You've got obviously got YouTubes and upload your bills and live chats. Wow, and then you know, that's that's not a bad looking page, really. Uh, you got Dan Andrews, quote from Dan Andrews, you know, and all this sort of stuff on there. And, um, yeah, hashtag proud to belong, but not anymore. They told to take it off. So, um, yeah. Ask so, so what ended up happening with that? Did they end up winning that? Yeah, Telstra did. Yep, good. 
Yeah, so the company t- was also ordered, this is Belong Energy, they were also ordered to transfer the domain names belong.energy and belongenergy.com.au to Telstra, as well as any other domain name containing the word belong. He's I mean, gone hard. But and look, uh, just another curious thing as a side note on this story was that, I don't know if it's true, I never went into it to, to verify, it might have been a bit of a r- mistake in the article, but it said that these guys, that, that Telstra took them to court on March the 12th, and then these guys are expected to have all this stuff transferred and, and whatnot by March 29th. I mean, when have you heard a court case go through that fast? Like, that's unbelievably fast. It's like two weeks. Like, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, so, neither have I. Must be, you know, Telstra must have thrown the big bucks. They must have been really, really keen to protect their belong. But like, Telstra's big enough to maybe buy that, that, that business as it is. They might, may as well. <laughs> they may as well, but maybe they 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 might want to get into the renewable energy. Who knows? But um, but yeah. But anyway, they've been told. So I don't know. Watch this space. Watch Belong Space at least. Anyway, Belong Energy to see what name they change to. But geez, what a waste of money for them, eh? Like all that advertising and all that all that work that's gone into all this. Look, they've got. Let's have a look down here. They've got. Oh, meet the team. Let's have a look at the team. Let's have a look at the CEO if there's one there. Yeah, but see, they they should have known. I mean, really, I mean, who who actually authorised the OK of that name to be, you know, be used? Maybe Trevinder. <laughs> Is that his real name? Yeah, or what? I don't know. Is what's going on there? Trevinder. Wow. Um, yeah. So one of them, someone's someone someone's gonna get the get the the can probably. But anyway, there they all are. They belong. They don't belong there anymore. Anyway, sorry guys. Okay, um, let's move on to something else. Uh, what what have you got, Joe? What did you find out this week? I, I found something really interesting this week, and that's um, the Google Home Hub is apparently the most popular smart display in Australia. Oh, all right. All right. You got one, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. Apparently, the Google Home Hub was launched in late October in 2018 and in, in Australia and was among the first countries to get it. The timing must have been pretty good because just after 10 weeks, the Google Home Hub reached 41.5% of the smart display market um, that's been installed in Australia. Even though it was the last device to, to arrive in Australia, it's the highest selling at the moment. Mm. Sorry, yeah, I was so, just, sorry, I was just having a drink. That's yes. okay. When it, compared to the um, Amazon Echo Show and the Spot, they were both accounted for just 13.2% of the market. Um, slightly behind um, is the share Fourteen point two percent of uh, the rest of the smart speakers. You know the JBLs and all your other brands of speakers that are that are out. Mm. So the the spot was available in Australia five months earlier, and so and and so was the show. Um, they both came before the Google Home Hub to the market, um, but yet the Google Home Hub is um, outselling them. You know, 41.5 percent of, of the users are buying it. And what did you say they were about there a couple of hundred dollars? Is that right? For that? Um, they were hundred and thirty dollars, I think it was. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? That's no, not too bad. Or no, one hundred and eighty dollars. Sorry, one hundred and eighty dollars was, was, was the cheapest I found it at. Do you have to have YouTube Red or whatever they call it? YouTube paid paid YouTube uh, to be able to use that properly? No, you don't. You don't have to have YouTube Red or YouTube Premium right. um, to use it. It will still work on your normal account. The only difference is that if you're not using the premium, you don't get a say on what songs you want to play. Um, you might want to play, um, you know, like the village people, for example, and you want to play one of their songs, and and you, you might not allow you to do that. It'll play you the greatest hits of the village people or the greatest hits of the 80s, mm. um, but it won't play you specific songs or specific albums. You know, oh. you could... And then that goes for the latest albums as well, you know, that are just released, you know, this year. Yeah, okay. But, but like, so where's yours? Where do you put yours in your home? At, at the moment, it's in the lounge room, right? Because I leave it as a, it's got like a, a the face has got the time on it. So right. I leave it as a face to, for the time. Yep. But later after that, it's going to go in the kitchen. Once we finish our kitchen, we're working on building a new kitchen at the moment. Sounds and interesting. Uh, my, my missus wants it in the kitchen so yep. that she can, you know, talk to it and listen to music and get recipes and, mm. and it'll come up on the screen, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess like just thinking of that, like the, the natural place for that thing is in the kitchen. Uh, do you think, well, obviously it's not holding back 
sales unless everyone's going to put one in the kitchen but like would you like you would you just buy one for the kitchen and then you buy your homes for other rooms like is there a is there a need to have it in the lounge room for example it's it's touchscreen isn't it it is touchscreen, but not yeah. only does it does it play music, but it also plays music videos. So therefore, um, you know, as you're playing the song, you you play the the film clip of the song, the movie clip. Um, it also uh, allows you to use it as, just as a general Google Hub. You know, mm. you can you can tell it to you know uh, cast to the TV. You can tell it to do all sorts of things. You can ask it questions and. What you could do with that, Joe, in the lounge room, like maybe instead of the time, can you hook it up to, say, the Google Photos and use it as a photo frame? Absolutely. Yes, you mm. can. There is that option. Yeah, that'd be a good option. Like, you yeah, still see that option. You still I, see... I just prefer to use the time. There's, there's the Google Photos, there's a um, the the time, and there's one other option there which I can't think of at the moment, but it gives you three options. And I, I, I just use the time because I can just look at it and think, oh, yeah, there's a the time. I, I, I guess you can always ask, hey, Google, what the time is, but... Mm. <laughs> you can just look at it. <laughs> That's right. You do it when everyone's asleep. But yeah, like you still, I still go into the shops and find. You can still see those picture frame things. I'll just turn that off. So you can still see those picture frame things for sale. You know, and they're still, well, they're like two hundred bucks or something. They're still very expensive. Uh, but this Google Hub thing, it sounds really good. So it looks like, yeah, you, yeah, Australia looks like we're out doing the US. So that was good. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The interesting thing is that in Australia, is um, twenty-two percent of the, all the smart speakers are owned uh, have have a smart display, compared to only thirteen point two percent of the US um, owners. So that means that over a million Australians have access to a smart display today in Australia. Hmm. So it's only going to get better. Um, you know, I have to admit though, the sound that comes out of this Google Home Hub, which is the one that's got the display isn't as good as the normal Google Home. Right. So they probably um, skimped on the sound to, to push it to the display. Yeah. But having said that, it's more than adequate. It's better than the um, the Mini. Hmm. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's as good as the as the Google Home. Well, I think the kitchen is the spot for it. Uh, yeah, I don't like bedrooms. I don't know, really, do you really need a screen in a bedroom? I don't really know why. Um, I mean, I mean when, once you've got a few of these in the home, you can use it as a broadcaster. And you can say, um, "Hey Google, uh, broadcast dinner's ready." Mm. And um, and from there, if you've got one in the bedroom, if you've got one in the lounge room, whatever else, it'll broadcast it to all the Googles in the home. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know. Like, I might have a look at one when you know when you buy something from the good guys, you get that twenty dollars every three every three months off something. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe if you you know one hundred eighty is too much. Maybe wait till you get one of those twenty dollars and screw it into the good guys and get twenty bucks off one. Yeah, but what, I think what you're not aware of is that your actual phone can do the same thing. You just, you know, you, you're going to leave it. You can, if you have a, a an, an old Android phone at home, yeah, um, you can do a similar thing. Use that as your Google Assistant. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm my if I'm using my assistant correctly. Like I find it to be hard on the phone. Like, I'll talk to it, and then half the time it doesn't understand what I'm saying. Half the time it doesn't do what I want it to do. But maybe I'm just not using the right terminology. I have to sort of brush up on my commands, I think. Um, yeah. But I changed it so, uh, you know, when you say good morning, I I, <clears throat> I, uh, I created that pattern. So, you know, it says, I say good morning, it says good morning, then it tells me the weather, then it tells me the headlines, and then it plays the radio. So it's, um, it's good. It's good. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, the Google Assistant is is way better than the Siri one. Um, I also posted on the um, the Facebook page that I have, the Joe the Gadget Man's Facebook page, a uh, a little demo there that I found really funny. Oh, okay. Uh, so for any of the listeners that want to have a look and see what that was, just go along to the Facebook page, uh, Joe the Gadget Man Facebook page, and you'll find it there. All right. So how's that? Is that Facebook dot com forward slash Joe the Gadget Man? Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, all done with that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with um, with my one. So, um, I, anything I can think of, it, it's going to get more interesting with these Google assistants. Um, other companies are bringing them out with all sorts of places. You know, IKEA's having it built into their furniture. Right. It's all, it's all happening everywhere with that. Mm, interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. All right, Microsoft has bowed to Chrome and Firefox pressure with a new security tweak. 
This new feature builds on the Window Defender Application Guard, or more commonly known in the geeky circles as WDAG or WDAG or something, W-D-A-G, the Windows Defender Application Guard. So the new feature uh, is built into the for Microsoft Edge, and it's software that isolates websites from opening them up in by opening up them. <laughs> It's software that isolates websites by opening them up in a virtual container isolated from Windows. So doing this way, doing it this way means that any malware on the page will find it harder to get, a, you know, a, a foothold into the Windows operating system, and therefore harder to penetrate a corporate network. Edge has now. This is it was interesting. These statistics. Remember the old days. You know, the the hardest nut to crack was. Uh, browsers internet browsers that nobody could ever come anywhere near internet explorer they were like high 90s you know 95 percent used used you know i think yeah that's right because they were built into the operating system this was before google came along yeah and uh you know like three percent might have been you know safari or something like that and then and the the others just whittled around like aol or whatever they had back then but anyway so interesting stat was edge now has 4.23 percent it's tiny uh, market share globally firefox has 9.72 thought it'd be higher than that and chrome has massive 65 percent um i'm getting a bit sick of chrome i'm thinking of i have been using edge quite a bit more to be honest like chrome's been getting a bit a bit uh a bit crazy like it, it seems to hang on like say you know when you you're building the web pages or whatever and sometimes it just seems to hang on to old cached versions of stuff. And, you know, unless you get, yeah, you're sure you can go in and then, you know, clear your caches and all that. But you don't want to be doing that every five seconds. But, yeah, it's just been annoying me a little bit lately. Uh, the Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 18.358 released this month earlier on uh, March the 15th. It included this WDAG browser extension for Chrome and Firefox. So the new extension means that when a site on an enterprise's naughty list loads into either browser, the user is redirected to an isolated Microsoft Edge session. So whether or not Microsoft's done that to you know further expose Edge to Chrome and Firefox users, who knows? But there's the extension. I might have to I'll download that and put that on and see how that works and go to some porn site and see what happens. <laughs> that's a that's a win. Oh, this is my favourite. Yeah, that's a win for admins. Uh, yeah, blah blah blah. So uh, yeah, so here well, I've got a graphic here for those on the on the YouTube. You can have a look at that. Um, yeah, so that, that's a good idea. Like anything that you know stops in or tries to or make it harder for infections to travel through web browsers into the operating systems. It's got to be a good thing. Uh, I don't think there's this, anything this, else. This reminds me of something that we talked about. Uh, maybe a few months back where the Chrome browser stopped people from jumping from one tab to another. This looks very similar to that. Yes, yes, that could be right. Yeah, yeah, that was a flaw, wasn't it? That's right. If you had two tabs open, yeah, the uh, hacker could, could uh, yes, jump from one from the open tab to a closed tab. Yeah, and see what you were doing on another tab. That's right, I remember that. Yeah, so I think there was some sort of an update in the... Um, in the Chrome, which fixed that. But, yes. Um, yeah, but this looks very similar. Mm. Yes, I think I think you're right. Uh, all right, and well, we're talking about Edge and Windows 10. You got a little Windows 10 story there, Joe. What's all? What's going on with that? I do. Um, you know how Windows 10 automatically updates um, every month. So apparently, Windows is um, expected to include uh, an upcoming feature. Um, in the Windows 10 upgrade that will back out of a failed installation. Yes. Uh, and then wait 30 days before it tries to install it again. Right. I think. So basically, what it does is Windows 10 will self diagnose any startup failures and, if necessary, uninstall recent updates to get the computer up and running again. Mm. Um, it will try to diagnose and resolve any failures due to the disk issues. Uh, system file corruptions, invalid registry keys, uh, or stuff of that matter. Um, basically, you know, when when there's an update, if it doesn't work right, it tries to fix it, and if it can't fix it, it says, "Okay, uh, well, well, we'll put this on hold for thirty days until you know we find a fix for it." 
Mm, yeah. So, uh, look, that's a good idea. I'm not, I'm, we might have mentioned this briefly in a previous episode. It rings a bell for some reason, but maybe maybe I just read about it. But, that, look, it's a good idea, uh, I guess. You know, like, like sometimes you scratch your head why things don't work. And then at the end of the end of three weeks of thinking about it and doing stuff, trying to figure it out, it's, it comes down to a Microsoft patch. It's been it's a it's a dud patch or something. Um, geez, you can pull your hair out with these things. So yeah, and sometimes it could be just something that um, you've just recently installed. I mean, it goes on here to say that if all the steps um, that they've taken are unsuccessful unsuccessful in trying to um, start your machine up properly, Windows will then determine if the startup issue was introduced after a recent driver or quality updates were installed. Mm. So if it was, it will uninstall those updates automatically to get the device back to a workable state. So that's uh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because like one of the first things you do, like someone says, oh, I mean, Windows 10 stopped working, you know, it won't boot up or get stuck here or stuck there. One of the first things you do, you just system restore, go back to a previous restore point, and like, oh, yeah, it must be eight times out of ten, you know, that normally fixes things up and you go well what did you install so like if this thing this thing looks like it might be going to try and do that automatically yeah that's right it, it, mm. it looks like it's um windows has sort of proactively looked at it and thought you know what we'll try and fix these these errors as they come along and 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 i think a lot of the times it's got to do with um their own updates i mean if you remember the update they did last time where it deleted some picture files and some oh, other files yeah. in their system. Yeah, that was I think, terrible. I think they're trying to make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen again. Mm. Uh, when is this coming to Windows? Is it, is, it, is it here or is it coming? No, it's coming. It's in the next update um, on the Windows 10 update, 1903. 1903 update. 19, okay, so that's March. That's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I wonder what update I've got now. Are we still on last October or whatever it is? I think so. Yeah. So, hmm. um, if, if 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 they're saying here, if it normally works, if it works as it normally would, um, they wanted to, it would prevent the repetitive rebooting uh, you normally get when your upgrade goes wrong. I'm just having a look here. Oh, I'm on eighteen oh three. Oh, geez, I must have missed that one. That because there was another one in September October. I'm on eighteen oh three. I don't know yeah. why. Oh, well, so this is this is nineteen oh three. Mm, I'll have a look at that later on. So but, I think it's a good update to to, to allow. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you got to do it. You can't you can't say no to these to the updates. Who can say no? I like updating as the second they things come out. <laughs> I, well, just I, love I don't it. do that on my phone. I try to hold them as long as I can with my phone. Yeah, look, I've I've learned the hard way. Like some of the some software on the that you know you install on the. To the servers and that for the web hosting of there was one server that I I, did, I just went and clicked upgrade straight away and uh, yeah had a bit of a problem for about half an hour <laughs> so well, you that's right. yeah you let it go of, for a while you get a lot of people they say oh you got to do your updates they got to let Windows do their updates you know don't hold back mm. well, now this is something that if it goes wrong they're, they're sort of looking at proactively trying to fix it mm. so yeah well, that's good so I can't wait for that oh where's my mouse I can't wait for that one Joe. I'll, uh, I'm going to have to see if I can scan for updates after the show. Like, I can't believe I'm on 1803. Why doesn't that automatically update? So sometimes you've got to push these things, haven't you? Like, I know yeah, sometimes, yeah. Even like on my this Android phone I've got, you go and have a look at the if there's there any security updates and say, uh, no, last check, you know, 5th of February, nothing to see here. Oh, no, last check, like... The, say yesterday uh, updates installed on the 5th of February they're the last ones nothing to see here and you go you swipe down you know try and refresh that and check for updates again and then you get an update and it's only checked yesterday I can't be that coincidental <laughs> yeah sometimes it's a matter of whether you reboot or not I mean it's the last time you reboot your computer yeah oh, I reboot it every week because I do the show I reboot before the show so it gets all the updates but sometimes you know those big those big updates those feature updates for some reason they don't just come down automatically uh, sometimes you've yeah, got to go I, look I, for them. Yeah, I think those big updates, those big feature updates, um, they're a bit more. Um, you know, you got to you got to sort of not. They don't they don't happen automatically overnight. They do give you the option to to do it when you want. When, you know, because it's going to take you a long time for the computer to do the update. 
It's mm. not just a few minutes. So it takes you know a good you know fifteen twenty minutes sometimes. Yeah, and that's the thing. Also, another tip is you know if your computer's a little bit old and you know you turn it on and you just get the black screen, but the hard drive's going around, just leave it on. It might sometimes it might take five hours, but uh, sometimes these things just have to install. You know. So don't go thinking the worst. Give it a give it a good at least overnight. If you if nothing happens overnight, then you start worrying. I think. That's, that's and then if it does come back, then start worrying and start working out why that happened because it's not a good thing that it takes so long. No, my, you might you be. Know, I'd be looking at like what happened with my other hard drive when I when I had that problem. I'd be looking at maybe running. Um, actually, you know what? Since since I've had that fixed, I've I've found myself a um, a software that that can check your hard drive right. and tell you whether it's it's um, it, it's healthy and it tells you how long life it expects for the hard drive before it starts to fail, is this, which is pretty cool. Is that for mechanical or SSDs or both? Both. Right. What's the tool? Ah, uh, geez, I can't think of the name now. Let me see if I've got it in this computer. I might have it on the other one inside. That's, yeah, because that sounds all right, doesn't it? Cause, so it does more sort of uh, detective work than the, the smart you know, the smart function on the, the BIOSes and stuff? That's right, yeah. This one here, let's see if I can find it. I think it's called ta- Tangent Hard Drive or something like that. Oh, right, well, let's see if I'll, I'll uh, we'll Google it. Tangent and see if anything comes up. Uh, products and solution at Backwards with software images you can preload into customer's hard drive. Oh, well, that may be there somewhere. Let's have a look at that. But if not, well, I'll uh, continue on with another story while you, well, you, you look for that one. Joe and I'll uh, okay. I'll I'll, uh, I'll keep going. Uh, now look, here's what something that came through, just as a bit of a side thing. But Dropbox, like it's been around for years. Everyone knows Dropbox. Probably everyone has got a you know a little Dropbox account somewhere they've forgotten about and just got I don't know just junk in it. But anyway, Dropbox is now limiting free accounts to just three devices. Now this probably goes along the same lines. I remember Evernote. They've they limited to three devices. Uh, Dropbox has removed unlimited device linking for the free accounts. Now, only paid plans will now come with unlimited device linking, uh, with prices starting at twelve seventy four a month for individuals, seventeen fifty per month for businesses. So, look, I've got the little free Dropbox. I don't use it too much, but um, it does come in handy. Well, I I think I might have mentioned this the other week, but these odd. Well, this Dropbox looks like it comes with about a terabyte. If you go on that twelve seventy five, but uh, look, I don't know. Look, I-, I wanted to use the OneDrive, you know, and it's just so so hard. Like the personal OneDrive is fine, but the Office three six five OneDrive is to start sharing and collaborating on documents in that and syncing down to your machine is ridiculously hard. <laughs> if you don't know what's going on, it is just ridiculously excruciatingly hard so uh, look i guess i you know if i was doing it if i did one a day i'd be fine but just to set one up the other day oh man i had to you had to go into think something like you know into the sharepoint interface and then then sync from that interface and then that would start to sync down in the machine to your computer i tell you but dropbox you just right click share bang away you go so much easier but yeah so but anyway dropbox that's the story with them so if you've got a dropbox and you've got it on the 100 accounts on 100 devices watch out did you find that thing, Joe? Hello? No, not yet. I'm still searching for it. Oh, that's all right. Well, we'll get it for next week if you like. But I'll, if you want, I'll, I'll do another story then. No, I haven't actually found it yet. It's um, it's in my other computer inside because I was running it on my laptop to test the, the laptop hard drive, and it's been playing up a bit, so it looks like that's got to go soon. Oh, the laptop hard drive. Oh, you muted yourself. I think. Did you mute yourself? No, no I'm oh. I'm good now. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, well, you better move on with a story then. Okay. So, um, I was going to do one of them. I was going to do the Dyson one, but I'll do this one here first since yep. we're just talking about the um, the Android phone. Um, it's a good idea to avoid any Play uh, Google Play Store apps that promise you to update the Android phone. Uh, apparently, there's some apps in the Google Store that portray to upgrade your phone to Android 9 
uh, Pi. But uh, so be aware that these the lineage, oh. can't be updated by using an app. Um, so you have to actually have the whole software update. Um, you'll find things like um, update to Android Pie or updates for Samsung mm. um, or update for that phone you may have that's designed to trick users to update um, phones. But what you should know is that, that the Play Store does not handle OS types updates. Right, right. So is this uh, mainly for people that would probably get sucked into these type of things as uh, you've got an old phone, you know, that won't progress p- past a certain Android version and you think, well, I need, I still need updates for, for an older v- version of Android? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I've, I've often myself gone looking for, I mean, I've got a couple of, I mean, we're talking phones now, but before I had a... a, a, a yeah, a tablet which was stuck on 4.4, and I thought, oh, you know, I wonder if I can update that. And um, I, I had a look at some of these, and they look pretty dodgy. You know, what they do is, or they, I mean, after looking into it, they, all they do is they bombard you with advertising, spyware, and malware type stuff. So hmm. they don't even go there. Um, if you, if you're looking to get Android updates, and uh, the phone hasn't been updated in years. You know, like it's not supported any longer. Um, there are third, mar- third uh, aftermarket third-party Android ROMs, um, and one to look at is um, the Lineage OS. Um, so, that, that provides the latest version of Android for a selected number of phones. All you really got to do is go to uh, lineageos.org um, and see if your model is there. Mm. Uh, I think I saw um, from memory your particular model there, uh, Glenn, the the Xiaomi M2. Is that the one you got, the Xiaomi M2? I got the Mi A1. Oh, Mi A1. Yeah, I think I saw your particular model in that one there. So you can actually, when yours doesn't upgrade, update anymore, you can actually run that link, that sort of ROM in there. Right, right. So where do you go to search for your phone? Is that... Yeah, up, go up. Yeah. And... Oh, Sharks, no. Lineage, download. A free open source system for various devices. Yep, try that. Try the download. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, look, there they go. Oh, look at them all. Yeah, so you should you should find your particular model, and I stress that to the listeners, don't download anything that's not the exact model of your phone. Mm. Um and the reason I say this is because not only is it just a software thing, but it also updates the radio modem, uh, the networking components, uh, your GPS software that makes the GPS work. Right. So it's, it's very important that you do download the exact version for your model. So here's my model here, so like the Mi A1, but why are they making uh, builds if mine or is still supported? Or, or, or what are they... Well, I'm still getting updates from Android. Okay, so, well, in that case, there might be a reason somehow that, uh, some people are, are developing uh, some sort of other ROM for it. It could be because the ROM that they have there is a better ROM, gets rid of all the um, okay. bloat that's in it. Yeah, because I'm finding that mine, there's I have coming across a couple of issues. I, I think my Wi-Fi is not as strong or it just wigs out a lot. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I might have a look at this yeah. one. So, yeah, so if anyone is thinking about upgrading their phone and it's not available, go, go have a look at these Lineage uh, OS downloads. Um, you may remember of C- Cinnamon or whatever Cinnamon um, ROMs before. Yep. They're, they're, they're no longer, you know, doing them anymore. And this is now this is the latest um, custom ROMs that you can get. <laughs> so they've stopped doing the cinnamon type ROMs, and now this is lineage is the new one, the new ones that are coming out now. I just looked for my first phone, which I've got down on the floor because it doesn't work anymore. The Galaxy S, the i nine three hundred, I think it is, and they they got ROMs there. That was yeah, there you go. released yeah. this year, January this year, and February this year. I'll have yeah, to have so a look at all that. What might be a good idea then is uh, so so that you can practice on how to do the um, the ROM update. Mm. Practice on that phone. Yes, yes. Right? And you'll see that it, um, in my notes, um, uh, there's a um, 
I link that if you might want to put, give to our listeners, and it's uh, the process of installing the Lineage OS is is pretty involved, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you, an amateur shouldn't really attempt it without sort of really knowing what they're doing, because you could brick your phone. Um, it takes about an hour or so to do, right? Um, but the link that's in there provides uh, a pretty good how to how to do it. Yeah, rightio. I remember I put on a on that Samsung. I did put a Cyanogen mod onto it, and uh, that seemed to work all right for a sec. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had a, in, in some of my older phones, I've had that 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 ROM on a few of my phones, and they they seem to work fine. I mean, every now and then you get one um, who who makes a, a ROM, and the ROM is itself is is not done a hundred percent. So you just go and 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 use somebody else's ROM, mm. you know. Until eventually, you know, you'll find that if you go through the forums and you find these these ROMs for your phones, you find that the ones that have got the most comments normally are the most popular uh, ROMs. And um, so I, I tend to go for those, right. for those ROMs because they they seem to have a lot of interest and a lot of. It's not something that's going to die within you know the next you know month or two. It's something mm. that's ongoing for at least another year or two. And it so makes you wonder though, like who. Who codes all this stuff, like, and why? <laughs> like, because the, I'm looking at this lineage page again. There's no, you know, there's no. You don't buy anything. Like, are they just fans, just geeks that just love coding to see if they can do it? That's not a bad way. That's right. Looks, looks That's right. Yeah. Well, that, 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 a lot of it is to see that they can do it. Um, and and what you'll find is that not not everyone knows how to do all of it. So therefore, one person might know how to do this, but doesn't know how to do something else. For example, they don't know how to, you know, get the the radio ROMs from the existing radio, uh, from the existing phone um, mm. and put it into this new one so that the the, the mobile works, you know, yeah. get phone calls and stuff. So they all help each other and eventually they end up getting it working. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Yeah, well, I've got that old phone there. If it hasn't been bricked, <laughs> I can't remember. I'll, uh, I'll pull it out and see if I can, uh, uh, yeah, maybe put one of these Lineage OSs on it. Because I think I did well, I did put the Cyanogen mod on, and uh, I can't remember what happened. I think it, it died as well, and I couldn't be bothered updating that either. But um, all right, let's go on with something else. Let me scroll back up here and let's tell you about the Google has been fined another 1.7 US billion for ad blocks by the EU. Now, what's going on here is that, uh, you know, when, say, you're on a, I don't know, the Sydney Morning Herald website, for example, say, and uh, you might do a search. There's a search box there to search within the paper, and it just happens to be a little Google search box. Well, then you type in, uh, you want to search for, I don't know, uh, Sydney Swans. So you search for the Sydney Swans, and then in the search results, Google has got the ads at the top of those results, you know, um, that's included within the paper. Well, apparently, you you can't get rid of those Google paid results, ad results, uh, without getting express written permission from Google. And so hence, who's going to do that? Nobody. And so that's what the EU have been up in arms about. They want Google to stop forcing people to display ads, uh, their Google paid ads, if they don't want them. That's it. That's that in a nutshell. Does that explain that pretty good? Um, I think I think so. I think I'm just reading through the article now. I think that's pretty much what it's all about. Now I've got a little, look, a little picture here that shows you better what i'm what i mean uh yes yeah, so good to see what that's right so there you go so 1.7 billion i think geez, they've been getting fine left right and center google haven't they yeah it's interesting um you, you mentioned that because um when i uploaded my youtube video yesterday i got a notification from youtube saying that the music that i was using uh, infringed some sort of copyright mm. and, what and you- i thought oh okay so what happens there? So the option was that do nothing, but the actual rightful owner of the music gets any monetizations from any of the um, ads that that they get from mm. my my uh, YouTube, or I can remove it, or or I can open a dispute and dispute the claim. And what'd you do? So, so I'm just going to leave it. I don't mind if they get the monetization from from my um, 
for my ads that I get. Not not that I got any. I don't have any ads. I don't think. But um, they um, they can get the money if they want. Hmm. Well, they, that little algorithm that YouTube uses gets pretty picky. I remember like, a, few, oh, a few years ago now. I was down at the like the Madra Bar show and I was filming a pig race, and you know, but in the background there was some band playing music. And you know, Google picked up that video and said that I couldn't use it because that band, the music that band was playing, and that's right. They, they were playing a cover. You could hardly hear it. It was about twenty seconds in some part of the video, but they pinged the video for it. And I said, "Geez, that's a bit tough." Well, that's what they're like. That's right. It's exactly right. The moment I uploaded the the video onto YouTube, um, within minutes, it told me that there was uh, some property rights to that to the music that was on that on that video and you know in all fairness i i didn't do this on purpose i just went to i can't remember where i got that music from it was some sort of uh, site where it's, it was free to mm. have so um there's been a few instances where uh yeah like this show Aussie Tech has been has been pinged for content uh violation like for you know we might be we might play a youtube video or something or or whatever but i dispute them I just, I just, I just go no, not having it because, because I, I don't believe that we're breaking any rules. Like, yeah, sure, if we, if we played a, you know, a, a film clip or a song, sure, that's a, that's a bit of a, a break. But, uh, but you know, some of the things, for example, like say, uh, I don't know, like YouTube videos, in like we stream a YouTube video in particular that might be, you know, the fly around Apple's new spaceship place at Cupertino. You know, we we might play that YouTube video for you guys. Well, then, you know, Google will say, the YouTube will ping us and say, well, can't because that's, you know, you've got to talk to the owner and they want their money and blah, blah, blah. And I, I just dispute it and say, well, it's fair use, man. Like, we're, we're, t- we're using it as a, a news story. We're not getting money, getting any money from it. That's just that's just how it is. It's fair use. And I've never heard anything back. Just dispute and it goes away. That's right. So what normally happens in that situation is I think that's just a, a robot um, algorithms that pick up this thing. And uh, once you you do a dispute, face um, YouTube then looks at it and says, "Oh yeah, that stupid robot stuffed up," so they just let it go. Or no, that's the robot was right with that stands. So that's yeah. what I think is happening there. Sometimes, like I think, for example, I think once there was a, some Microsoft video I played, and I think Microsoft might have come back and said, uh, "No, no, no, the, the, we're not accepting your uh, dispute," and. And so I just went, well, let's take the show down then, stuff you. And, you know, by that time, the show is probably three or four weeks old. So it's all old news anyway. Like, I'm not going to go getting too stubborn about these things. But, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's how that one works. Now, what else have I got here? Um, I have got... Oh, yeah, that's right. The other thing that Google... Well, we're on the good bit of a Google show this week. Now, did you notice we didn't mention Apple? That's because... I don't want to. <laughs> there, there was an Apple. Oh, iMacs have been updated, and i earpods or, or AirPods, whatever they are, been updated, and uh, iPads have been updated, and there's another announcement on the 25th. It's all going on over there. But anyway, you can listen to the Aussie Mac Zone and figure all that out yourself. Uh, because we're talking about Google this week, so Google is is uh, to promote and is. Android users and prompt Android users to choose their preferred preferred browser. Now, this is what we just touched on just before, and Microsoft knows all about this. Remember, they went through the antitrust laws and rules and and law disputes oh, a little while ago now because, as Joe said earlier before, you know, you bought your copy of Windows and Internet Explorer was on there, and away you go. Thanks for coming. That's all you knew, and that's why IE had like ninety five percent market share. Well, Google's come up across the same thing now. Uh, EU, they're tough over there, aren't they? Uh, they don't like that, uh, That you know, when, when you buy an Android phone, all you get is Chrome. And they don't like that. So anyway, Google will, be, will prompt Android users to choose their preferred browser and search apps. Now, this is what the, if you're on the video, this is what a similar screen you might have copped when you installed on XP all those years ago. Uh, which one do you want? The Firefox, the Chrome, the Opera, the IE, and the Safari. Apparently, they were all randomly uh, ordered as well uh, back then. Um, I don't know how, but anyway, that, that was the story. So by pre-installing its Chrome browser and Google search app on Android devices, Google has an unfair advantage over its rivals. Oh, 
In the coming months via the Play Store, we'll start asking users of existing and new Android devices in Europe which browser and search apps they would like to use, uh, said Google. Now, I've got a little problem. My little problem is... Uh, Oh, you know, this is where this is where you sort of you don't know, do you? Like my little problem is, Google created Android, Google created Chrome, Google created the Play Store. Why can't Google just push what the hell they like? Why is it that they get that? It, why should it be that because you just because you become so successful because you had the the in, ingenuity to invent and, and to market and to get this thing pumping worldwide, then now you're going to get penalised for it. And, you know, and because it's an unfair advantage. Like, is this a bit of, um, you know, jealousy sort type of thing, you know? like, or, or, on the other hand, can your company become too big where it does become monop- monopolistic and therefore, yes, it does really start to detract and, and um, you know, um, and, and pull other people down with it because they can't, you know, they can't do it. I don't know. It's a difficult question, isn't it? But the EU doesn't think yeah, so. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, it... it, it... It sounds a bit unfair, but at the same time, you'll, you'll find that people will say, no, we can't give uh, one company too much power. It'll have you know too much power. We won't be able to do anything anymore. Well, they've got cetera, that now, haven't they? Like yeah. the, the Googles and the Facebooks, I think they've got too much power at the moment. If, uh, if, you, think, if you think back a few years when, when Telstra had the monopoly over the whole of Australia, um, the government forced Telstra to allow Optus to use part of their network um, so that they can uh, compete on a resale type level. Um, and then what you'll find it is that Optus then slowly but surely built their own network mm. um, and then come in um, into the marketplace as well. Um, today it's slightly different. Now you've got a whole heap of other operators, but that's sort of another example of what happens. I think like... Yeah, this is only just, you know, touching on the surface and just, you know, without putting too much thought into it. But my initial response to that would be something like, well, Telstra then was, say, publicly owned. So therefore, why should a, why, why should, uh, um, you know, to put an even playing field down for some, for a privately owned company um, to get into the market... I think that's okay to do against a publicly owned company, if that makes sense. Uh, I think, you know, because it, no one will ever beat the combined resources of a publicly owned company. Like, n- not, nothing can. You know, probably not even Google. You know, like, they couldn't. Like, you know, Telstra, Telecom, whatever, they were owned by everybody. The, the Australian government owned it. We owned it. So there's no way uh, that anyone privately like Optus is going to come in and... Uh, do well unless there was a bit of a shake up there and uh so i don't mind that too much that way but that other you know if you build something and get told to stop that that i don't know i have to think about that more yeah i sort of i understand what you're saying but it, yeah it's a difficult situation you know you you shouldn't give everyone all the power so yeah i think so but you can like you can if you wanted to you, you, like google's not stopping you from installing another browser it's just that Chrome's installed by default. So they're not stopping you. It's just who's going to be bothered, I guess. That's what they're saying. Well, yeah, it was a, it's a bit like the, the Internet Explorer days when mm. the Internet Explorer was the default one. And then, yeah, sure, they never stopped you from installing you know, Google Chrome or Firefox or but then, anything like that. Yeah. But then Google came, they came to the party and then, you know, they started saying, well, every time someone goes to the Google homepage, google.com, and they're, they're coming to the homepage in IE or something else, we're going to put a little box up and says, wouldn't you like to download Chrome? It's nice and easy. And so therefore people did and then slowly but surely you know, they got market share. That's the market working. It's working correctly, which is good. A market forces person I am. All right. Where, what what else have you got there, Joe? Um, I found that article that uh, we were talking about before about the hard drive. Oh, yeah. What is it? It's called uh, Hard Disk Sentinel, Sentinel, right? I'll put a link in the um, the podcast notes that I got there. Oh, yeah. Just, All right. just, um, that's a really good software. I'm, I've got that running. And it and it. Um, I wonder if I can get a bit of a screenshot. I, I don't think I can. But uh, I've got that running in, um, in, in my server. And um, it shows you all the hard drives 
their life expectancy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, right. is this it? Here? Is that the page? Where's yeah, it? that looks like it. So you just download the one for your particular operating system. Right. So you you can get the professional. Are there some that you buy, or what did you get? That you get the. I, I just got the free version. Yeah. I, I just wanted to see. A whether it worked and and B whether what what, what condition the the software was on on the laptop so um, it gave me what I wanted to know right. and um, I can then uninstall it and then maybe try it again in a few months time if I need to as well but I, I know that I don't have to worry about the laptop so is this away. so is is this a, a DOS thing or is it does it run while you it it's a Windows run thing it okay. actually runs as, as an application right right. Okay, they might, I pulled up, must have been the, the, oh yeah, DOS edition. Okay. Yeah, okay, sweet. Yeah, nice. So de- detect hard disk controllers and their vendor and device ID, size, model, serial number, uh, performance may be different, no, blah, 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 blah. Detects and displays information about disks and the AHCI controllers. Uh, displays full hard disk text description. And oh, there we go. The DOS one might be a bit too too much for people. But, um, yeah, you might want to go and have a look at the Windows one. It's got like a nice, uh, nice looking interface. The colors Linux does. Um, you know, reflect the, the type of hard drive. So if the hard drive is in good health, you'll see all green. Um, if it's not in good health and it's sort of a, it's a bit how you go on health, you'll see the different colors reflecting. Um, it, it also gives you the temperatures of the hard drive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Yeah. Cool. I'll have a look at that. Oh, there's some uh, pictures. Looks like they've been screenshot. That looks like XP photos. Well, that's the Windows 10. If it comes up. Geez, their website's a bit slow. They might need hosting. There we go. Yeah, that's what it looks like. You can It, it shows you all the hard drives, their conditions they're in. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see from that screenshot, but um, you should be able to see how much time it thinks it's got left before it breaks down. Yeah, okay. So you got the yeah the health, the temperature... Uh yeah, SSDs. That'll do the SSDs. Yeah. Oh, that's the smart, the smart readout there. Oh, you got the overview, the temperature information, log disk performance, and alerts. Yeah. Oh, I might have a look at that one, Joe. Good, good, good spotting. See what that one's all about. All right. Rick, uh, said, uh, Rick, Rick said in the uh, in the comments that there is another one there, the NeoWin.net. Is that another um? Software. Oh, he, he, oh, let me just see. Uh, give me a sec there, Rick. I'll see whether that's the same thing that you're talking about. All right, so I've got the, the Neo Win. Oh, that's what's all that about? Neo Win? That looks like it's. Yeah, a, I think that's a similar type thing there. Is that it? That doesn't look like what Yeah, is. Rick. Yeah, I think that's a similar type thing. Uh, I, I would prefer to go with the uh, Centennial one, um, which. Which I found is pretty good. How do you spell Neo Win? I must have got the wrong one up. I think Neo Win is just the the, the, the the company that's selling this, but I think that's actually the same name. Right. Neo N E O W. You, you'll find it in the show in the show comments. Oh yep. Um, Rick's put a, a link there. In the Facebook. Yeah. Oh, I can't do. I'm not on Facebook okay. at the minute, so we'll, we'll okay, let that a, go. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. Yeah, but yeah, Rick, that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, uh, okay. So, what else have you got, Joe? Anything else to finish up with? I have. Um, the last one I have for today is that you know Dyson um, is well known for vacuum cleaners, but as some may know, they also have a range of fans and air purifiers to suit a, ni- uh, a large number of different situations. And this week. The company has announced that it was moving into the personal air purifier market right. with uh, a small tabletop device. Right. Yeah. So apparently, this new device is designed to be make to make your own personal space more comfortable rather than the whole room. Um, so, thanks to the technology it calls Core Flow, it promises to clean up about forty liters per second of your personal airspace. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, the purifier will come with a remote control, and it's got a rotating head that sits on top of the, the unit to displace uh, the air around around you. Um, 
and it's got a sleep timer of up to about eight hours. Um, it won't come with some sort of app uh, connectivity because Dyson is trying to keep the cost of uh, uh, down for this this, this device, mm. and it acknowledges that this is just about your personal space rather than the whole room. So therefore, you really shouldn't need an app for it. So well, this is probably right. Uh, are you into these things, Joe? Is this something that you would be Look, into? Look, you know, this is uh, this 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 attracted my into attention because I'm thinking that if you've got something that you know at night time you find it difficult to sleep, it could be some allergies and stuff like that. I'm just wondering whether this device could help at all. Um, hmm. uh, it, they've 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 said here that Dyson at, at at the launch of the event included suggesting that some places where this can be used is at the bedside table. Um, while you're sleeping and uh, or at the at the desk while you're working so um it's um it's something worth considering i guess if you've got allergies i think it's more of a watch this space this is this is the second one that i've seen this week there is another brand um that i've seen somebody else talk about on youtube um it's a different name and it looks different but this is the second one that i've seen so it must be something that they're going to bring into the market it must be something that that people want. Mm. I wonder what uh, sort of uh, like what sort of I don't know, area does it does it work on? Like you know, does it? Yeah, like yeah. You know, if you sit in the a... basically, it says your personal space. So oh yeah, oh yeah, I see what it's doing. I'm, I'm, it's not. It doesn't do the whole room. So I'm I'm reckon maybe one arm's length around you, or my, an arm and an arm and a half around you, mm. um, to provide this sort of. Um, you know, I see. Oh, yeah, we just showed a video uh, for those who are listening through audio. It was uh, so you, you sit in a desk in front of you, and then so it will suck in the the air around it, and then actually blow it. Probably, I'm not sure how hard it's going to blow, but and blow it onto your or disperse the air back onto your face. So all your breathing is nice, pure. Oh, it does blow hard. Is there? Look there. Yeah, there. It's blowing. Yeah. So yeah. so it does just disperse and blow back into your face the um, purified air. Yeah, so this one, this one here is a pretty basic one. The one I've seen before uh, on another YouTube video, and I don't have that information here in front of me, but maybe if someone wants to know, they can leave a note in the comments and I'll see if I can get it for you for next week. Um, but the one that is um, in the, uh, the one I've seen last week was it, it did all sorts of diagnostics on the, the quality of the air. It did um, how, with humidity. Um, it was a fire alarm. It, it did all sorts of things, right? But at the same time, it it it, it, you know, it detected particles in the air, and how, basically how healthy the air was. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of devices coming into the market today. Hmm. Yeah. So like, it's got a lot of features here, doesn't it? Yeah, look, that's it removes gases and 99.7 percent of all pollutants. An activated carbon and glass HEPA filter captures gases. Yeah, and allergens as small as 0.3 microns. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so this is something that if you have some sort of allergies, um, you might want to look into this particular device. And, I mean, it's not available in Australia yet. It's only uh, available in uh, the UK as of next week. But um, if you're really keen and you want it, you might want to you know order it from, from the UK. I think there might be a, or well, from Dyson itself, it's got a $349, so that might be America as well. It could be, yeah. But it's not here, so who cares? <laughs> but we can get it from America. So yeah, three forty nine ninety nine. So what's that? Add another hundred and thirty to that. So about four hundred and thirty four hundred and eighty, something like that. Woo, it's up there. Up there. All right, what else have I got? Uh let's finish off with I think I I might have I might have two quick ones. I just so here's one Microsoft resurrects Clippy. Do you remember Clippy? So ten... I, thought that, I thought that was gone and buried by now. Oh, yeah, I thought he was uh, un, unwound as well. <laughs> but apparently he's back. Ten years after the animated character was put out to the, its virtual pasture, having irritated scores and hundreds and thousands of people in the Microsoft Office world, apparently he's back. Uh, Clippy first appeared in Microsoft Office for Windows version 97. So Clippy... Have survived until Office 2007 for Windows and Office 2008 for Mac, although it was turned off by default in Office XP. So even then, Microsoft wasn't fully ready 
to say goodbye. They can't kill it off. Uh, where well, a year ago there was a, it was he was inserted into a hidden message uh, about the anime about himself into the into Cortana in what Microsoft called an Easter egg. So apparently it's not there now because I tried. But when you said what is Clippy? Apparently Cortana came up and advised he's living his sunset years playing Canasta and winning. As long as he's That's winning, so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> they should have kept him there, like you know, in the in the Cortana, like you know. That's good to have a sense of humour. But uh, but anyway, so he's res- you might be asking why is he resurrected? Well, he's resurrected because they're bringing him back into the Microsoft Teams. Be the only place you can find him. But uh, if you're in, into the Microsoft Teams, that's how you'll uh, you'll be able to get him. I think it's an add-on or something uh, that you get if you need help in Teams. A little clippy will pop up, and uh, there you go. And also, here's one for the for the masses. Telstra returns on its ten thousandth mobile network site, so uh, which was a five G site in Toowoomba. So Australia's largest telecommunications provider says the new site in Toowoomba will not only provide better coverage to its customers in the area, but yeah, that's that's a good sentence, isn't it? Not only, but then that's it. Okay, Telstra launched... Here's a bit of history now. Telstra launched 1G in Sydney in 1987. Look, I've got a little thing for those following on video. There you go. Uh, 1G in Sydney in 1987 with just 14 base stations. And Telstra says that today its mobile network covers more than 2.5 million square kilometres and it's vastly more than any other network provider in Australia and offers coverage up to 99.5% of the population. So not only is the network getting bigger and stronger, it's faster and smarter, blah, 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 blah. Uh, So 1993, Telstra launches 2G. 2006, oh, geez, a bit of a a wait between drinks there, launches uh, 3G. 2010, it uh, connected its 7,000th base station. 2011, uh, its first 4G LTE. Telstra uh, 2012 switches on its 1,000th 4G site. 2013. Is this interesting or just boring? I'll just skip to the interesting part then. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And uh, 2018, Telstra Mobile Network. Co- yeah, it's all coverage. Rubbish. And then 2019. There you go. All good. Excellence. Oh, Joe's falling asleep. Sorry about that, Joe. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not asleep. I was actually reading what was on the screen there. That's really interesting, you know, to see all this, uh, um, you know, coverage being, you know, migrated from the uh, from 1987 to 2019. I was just looking at that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that the next wave of uh, sites that they're going to release is um, the IoT network. There's a, a specific network that they run separately to the mobile network. Mm. Or IoT devices, so that'll be interesting when that comes out. Mm. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's all going on that uh, this IoT business, isn't it? Like, it's just all going on. Like as you were just saying before, you know, you've got the the Google speakers in the lounges or whatever from IKEA. Like there's something you, I just you wouldn't think of, and then but then when you hear about it, you go hmm, makes sense. <laughs> like you know, I want a fridge in my lounge before I need a speaker. <laughs> yeah, so, and and let's not forget that also in a. Alexa and uh, Amazon is also very much in the scene as well, but um, they are slightly in a different market. I mean, although they, they have music and, and, you know, and all that sort of stuff, but I think Google is the one to beat at the moment. Mm. Yes. All right. Well, I think uh, for something that, uh, yeah, I, I was worried about grabbing stories this week because I was, I, was, I was pushed for time today. But, uh, I think we did well, Joe. There's heaps of them. Yeah, yeah, I, I had I had about four stories and uh, and plus my little YouTube story. So yeah, that's good. Um, I think we did pretty well. Yeah, excellent stuff. Now, uh, thanks everyone on the Facebook that joined us live. Uh, I'll go through all your comments a bit later on. Is there anything important that anyone's said, Joe? Have you got the Facebook open? I have. It's just uh, mostly Rick's um, just confirming some details about the. Um, this, uh, the hard drive tests and um, performance tools. He's given us another link there that we can have a look at. Uh, well, I'll have a look at that later, Rick. Thanks very much. All um, right. But at the moment... Um, so that's in the Facebook stream comments. So if anyone's interested in that Neo Win, uh, go and have a look okay. for that. How did you spell Neo Win? N-E-O? Yeah, that was just a brand name. N-E-O-W-I-N, I think. That yep. was just another company basically selling it. Yeah, so N-E-O-W-I-N. Oh, the same thing. 
Yeah, it's the same thing, just in some other company selling it, maybe rebranded or something. Mm, right. Okay. All right. So uh, do all that, and uh, yeah, make sure you have a have a uh, end of March hard drive checkup. So uh, yes, there you go. yes, you, you won't you won't regret it. Grab that software. It's free for a short period of time. You get some, you know, a chance to test it out, and um, and if you like it. Uh, install it and pay for the proof and uh, it, you'll get a notification when your hard drive's starting to die which is a good idea excellent that's what we all need so check up or back up but make sure you do something alright cool thanks for joining us again for another week of Aussie Tech Heads don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio uh, it's on the TuneIn Radio app you can get it everywhere download the app stick it on Search for Aussie Tech Radio, get it there. Uh, you can get the show on Spotify. You can get our show on the Facebook, streaming live. You get the show on YouTube. You get it on iTunes. You can get it on Pocket Cast or wherever you can put a, an XML feed or an RSS feed XML thing into your into your catcher. You'll be able to get us. I think every time I see a new catcher come around, I'll sign up and punch the show in. So uh, pretty much everywhere. All right, cool. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. It's been great to see you again and have a chat again about no worries, all things tech. No, no worries, and thanks everyone for listening and watching. Uh, if you were watching or listening on wherever YouTube, iTunes, wherever, or iPhone, Android, we love them all, and we love you too. All right, we'll see you next week. Go the Sharks. See you later. Bye. Woo.